But how, um, let's take it back to when you actually started the orchestra. It's about 2015, right, you started? About six years yeah. ago? Yeah, 2015, me and Alex, um, Shy Cookie. We, um, I've known Shy Cookie since um, I was 15 years old. Um, wow. you know, we both met and we started working in Sainsbury's, funnily enough. We were both in sixth form college. Really? <laughs> um, we started working in Sainsbury's. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we found a common ground, which was music, and we've been best mates ever since um so yeah me and him you know we, we started the project back in 2015 house and garage orchestra um simply because i used to do a lot of um promoted events he's always been in music production etc um, but we'd never actually done a project together so you know we were just talking one christmas we said why don't we start a project together um and we started talking about live events, how we could incorporate um, the studio produced music and how we could incorporate live musicians, etc. And it just grew from there into what is now the House and Garage Orchestra. You know, live music is something we both love. Um, making music is something we both love. And events, I love organising events. So it's all kind of come, um, come together because of what we love doing, to be perfectly honest. That's amazing. Like, what was the, like, the kind of the idea behind it? Because I know that you went to go and see him at university. I think it was a, a lecture at university. And yes. Was doing, and so what was the kind of like the sparking moment with that? I think let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do a house at Garage Orchestra. What was that kind of flash moment for you? So the, the flash moment was, I think we were both at an event, a live music event that Alex had actually organised. Um, and he invited me along. Normally, I don't go out during the weekdays because I'm just, yeah. I'm just a hermit nowadays. Yeah. But, um, I went out, you know, and we said we could really do something with House and Garage along these lines with a live mm. band, orchestra, etc. And obviously speaking beforehand, when we were out together in the environment, in a live music environment, it was just like, look, let's do it. We've got to do it. Let's put it together. And, and, we, and we did, you know, o- over the... Over the coming months after that event, you know, we sat down, we planned everything, we penciled um, which artists we would love to work with, which songs we really want to bring to the forefront um, in, in our project. Um, because initially the idea was to incorporate a lot of new music into the projects as well. So obviously Alex is a producer, he's got a lot of new music coming out, he collaborates with a lot of artists. We want to incorporate a lot of new music into the house and garage orchestra set as such um because garage has kind of got that stigma whereby everybody always refers to it as old school garage or um old school classics or um which i think does it almost an injustice it kind of keeps it stuck in time whereby there is so much amazing new music um being produced all of the time, amazing producers. I've got so many favourite producers, you know, Zed Bias, um, you know, Wookie, Sunship, you know, you, you, you've got the conductors, you've got all the new producers coming through. There is so much good music coming through. But sometimes I think people don't get to hear it. Mm. Um, so that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to incorporate the old school tracks and start bringing through a lot of the new music in our live set um and that is what we are starting to do i think by it, it's almost an education mm. teaching people and keeping them up to date at the same time um so i think that's very important in what we immediately set out to do and, and i think we are doing it to a certain extent but we're certainly going to be doing a lot more of it as well but let's take it to your first event actually it was queen of hoxton wasn't it 2015 we first performed yeah. that's it yeah, what was it like to finally get your orchestra up and running and perform for you at your first event? That was, yeah, that was very exciting. That was that was a really, really good event. You know, for our first event, you know, we, we were looking for a venue, um, Queen of Potsdam, which was, you know, fantastic starting point. I think it was like a 500 capacity. Um, yeah, we just literally put it together um got the date in and just started promoting it again it was self-promoted by myself um again completely sold out um and yeah it was really exciting to see our our concept that we hadn't done yet which was simply just an idea come to fruition it was it was yeah it was a very proud moment to be perfectly honest because we were told at that point by so many people you can't do house and garage music live yeah. in a club you know, we were told that by so many people and it was almost disheartening sometimes. But, you know, when you've got a vision, if you can see that vision, you can actually see it 
yeah of course you, you, you've got to go through with it you can't just give up on it yeah. um, if, if it's something that you want to do you've got to you know you've got to um, try and fulfill your dreams and that was one of those moments we planned something we had an idea and we made it work it was definitely so, yeah the pride moment definitely man because how, how cause, okay, i was gonna get to that actually i mean how difficult was it to overcome those kind of obstacles of people telling you say you can't do you can't do that don't do that don't do that i mean how difficult was that for you it, it, it was it was it was difficult because of you know when people say those things it puts a lot of doubts in your head you're thinking mm. you know why hasn't anybody really done this like this before you know obviously there's been bands and people have played house and garage music live before but no one's tried to do it on this scale or make a project out of it like the way we have um and and it, it is very um it can be daunting and you start to doubt yourself but um Again, you know, if you believe in something truly, just just go for it. You know, that's why we started off small. We started off in a 500 capacity. You know, we've gone on to do a UK tour up and down the country. We've sold out two, three, four thousand capacity venues now, um, and we're going on. We've got um, uh, we've got so many events coming up. We've got we've got some very exciting events coming up. You know, we've started. We've actually got our own um, festival that we've just launched, which is going to really? be a wedding wow. in September. Yeah, September the 24th, we've launched our own festival, which is a 5,000 capacity. And just to think of where we came from, you know, people saying it's not going to work to where it is and hopefully where we're going to take it to. It's just so much fun. It's just exciting, you know. It is really is. Obviously, I'm such a huge fan of your work, obviously. And just to see that journey you've gone through has been amazing. I'm really proud of you. So keep up the amazing work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anytime, man. But when you first started um, and then did it, and obviously gone to huge success since, like you said, with like the festivals, the tours and so forth, and your old albums as well, work with such major artists. Have the same people that kind of tried to put you off the orchestra reached out to you again and said, say, sorry, that we, we had the doubts. I mean, have they reached yeah, out definitely. To you? Yeah, they definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. You know, I think the, 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 the thing that initially put doubts in people's heads was the... Um, the scale and the costs mm -hmm. and how is it going to be feasible in the environment where we wanted to put it but um we've been able to scale it up and down you know depending on venue depending on what we do we can scale it you know and that's that, i think that's been key because we started off small but we had yeah. you know a big aspiration we started off you know we were calling ourselves the house and garage orchestra but we had four musicians yeah. <laughs> but yeah. we always had that dream in our head to have a full orchestra playing the music um mm. so you know yes people have reached out to us and they you know that we, it's not that we've proven them wrong it's just something that wasn't being done mm. so to go forth and do what we wanted to and to be able to scale it in the way that we can again having those people reach out to us it is really you know again another proud moment it's just proud that we've got that yeah. support or backing from our peers it's incredible. I mean, how long did it take you initially to create the whole orchestra from, say, beginning to end to that first event? Was it quite quick or was it longer than you might have anticipated? Um, <laughs> Ooh, your volume's cut out. Ishmael? We've been very lucky to have, have worked with some amazing musicians, have uh, an amazing MD now. Um, you know, we've, we didn't start off with an MD. We were, again, we were doing absolutely everything ourselves. So I've learned so many lessons. I've made some mistakes. But, you know, with mistakes, you learn. And, you know, I think where we are now, we're still evolving what we do. But it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And, and we, like I said, we've got some amazing musicians, our MD... Um, it, it's absolutely fantastic and you know yeah it, it's just yeah brilliant <laughs> <laughs> would you say would you recommend actually bringing in an MD for any group to take this their project further do you feel 100% it, it, it gives you that support mm -hmm. um, a little bit more understanding um, of what's involved I'm not a, I'm not a conductor mm -hmm. you know but I understand what is now happening by working with my md i know the process you know we get all of our music 
Um, me, myself, Alex, and our MD, we sit down and we structure our, the songs we're going to play. We set out our um, playlist or set list and such, and and we work together to build the set so it's cohesive and and it runs smoothly. And when we go into our rehearsals, we leave everything down to our MD. He, he takes what we've spoken about um, and what we've kind of envisioned and puts it into practice. Having that MD on a project like this and taking it to the scale that we have has been, has been paramount. Mm. How does, really, how, really is important. Yeah, I mean, how, how do you find your MD? Was it through a, con- like a mutual contact or did you reach out to them? Right, so <laughs> again, <laughs> this, 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 this was a weird one. So we've met a few people just by, you know, word of mouth um, through musicians that we know and just networking. Mm. In general, online, Facebook, etc. Um, but our MD at the moment, who, who hopefully is our MD and stays our MD, yeah. is a guy called Ben. Um, funnily enough, I met him via my mum. My mum has been banging on about her friend's son, who's an amazing musician. And I'm like, mum, leave me alone. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yeah. We've been doing it for a while now. You know, we're good. I don't need any help. He says, okay, well, here's his number just in case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one day I thought, you know what? Let me just phone him, satisfy mum. Um, I phoned him, spoke to him, looked at his body of work and was blown away. I was like, wow, okay, we need to have a sit down and a proper chat. Sat down with him, ran the project by him. He was he was blown away by what we've done mm. without actually having some of the knowledge that he has um, with working with orchestras, etc. So, you know, again, we, we clicked immediately. Um, we started working on a larger scale um, orchestra and yeah, that, that's how we met. Basically, mum knows best, apparently. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So they do. <laughs> that's brilliant. But going back to that first event at Queen of Hoxton, was that at, um, your own event? Like, like you created yourself? Or did you hire that, the video out yourself? Or was it through another event, say, um, Isle of Live or one of those kinds of events? No, that was our own event completely. Literally hired oh, wow. the venue, um, self-promoted it. Put the t- done all the ticketing, done absolutely everything. Booked the DJs, booked absolutely everything. Wow, that's amazing. How much work was involved in that then? Um, well, I, that was that was me. I I kind of took that on board. Alex at the time was dealing with the musical side of things, so um, Alex was dealing with the musicians, the set mm-hmm. list, um, and I just basically just took up the mantle and dealt with the clubs. And the ticketing side of things was that I've, I've done it previously by throwing my own events, etc. So we kind of played to our own strengths and we just did what we needed to do. Mm, that's incredible. Obviously, since then, you've like performed at like, the Roundhouse to um, like, the Alba Hall in Manchester, like loads of amazing places in the UK tours. I mean, what's it like to fill out such amazing venues? Again, it's it's been such a journey and mm. Yeah, it's, it's just, again, we're just proud of what we've done. You know, yeah. it, it, it's been such a journey. It's going from a 500 cap venue up to the two, three, four thousand cap venues. Yeah, it's just, you know, we just have to take a step back sometimes when you're not running around like a headless chicken on the day of the event, getting everything in, in order. Um, just take a step back and just appreciate what we've achieved. Yeah, you know, we're, we're so, 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 so proud of what we've done. 